I'm Mikey G, and it's Saturday, July 15th. Tesla has announced that it built the first Cybertruck at Gigafactory, Texas, leading some to wonder if the electric pickup is ahead of schedule. The Cybertruck was initially slated to begin production in 2021, but that was before COVID and all that nonsense. Tesla's latest official comment was the timeline would be this summer, meaning 2023, and that it was planning a delivery event around the end of the third quarter, which would be the end of September. Now, that perfectly aligns with today's photo, which appears to be a production intent unit. It also aligns with the summer timeline for the start of production. However, recently Tesla told suppliers to be ready for the Cybertruck release candidates in late August and production early October. According to this, Tesla may be a little bit ahead of schedule. There's still plenty of time to go before meaningful production, and especially deliveries. If this momentum continues, and it could possibly be that the program is ahead of schedule, but as it stands, we can't celebrate too much other than the victory for the Tesla team making their first unit. Tesla has unveiled its version 4 supercharger station, and it now includes a space for a credit card reader for the first time. With Tesla leading the way in charging infrastructure, they were keen or prescient to have customers interact through chargers on their phone app, making things convenient, cheap, and secure. Back in March, Tesla walked away from government funding in the state of California, and Tesla directly stated, quote, Unfortunately, due to unnecessarily cumbersome payment infrastructure requirements, we are unable to utilize this award. Now, it seems that Tesla is preparing for the possibility of being coerced into having manual readers, as the new units do have this capability. Now, we're not sure which government agency on which level has spurred Tesla into this, but it must have been big considering that they turned down California already. Tesla has launched its Cyber Quad for Kids, the electric ATV in pint size, in the country of China. In lieu of the actual Cyber Quad, which is expected to be a full-scale electric ATV, Tesla launched the Cyber Quad for Kids in partnership with Radio Flyer last year. After selling out of the initial 5,000 units, the product was pulled from the U.S. Consumer Protection Safety Commission after a 36-year-old fell off and got a bruise. But it seems that Tesla is not afraid of the Chinese government protecting its citizens from the misuse of a child's toy, as it's now for sale on their site. It's selling for roughly the same price as it did in the U.S., and it's sold out. Mitsubishi Motors revealed this week that it is suspending operations in China due to its inability to keep up in the EV market. China continues to lead the industry in the transition to EVs as sales reached over 2 million through the first five months of the year, up 51.5% year over year. Now, according to a memo released this week from Bloomberg, a chart was shared showing the company's decline in the Middle Kingdom of China. Around 2019, the company reached their peak, and after COVID, they really never recovered. Mitsubishi cited China's transition from internal combustion to EVs as the reason that they are falling. Coming in well below expectations, Mitsubishi only has one EV, called the AirTech, which only sold 515 units last year. Now, while Mitsubishi may be the first one out, there is certainly suspicion in the wings. Honda, Mazda, and Nissan sales have fallen for the last two years, and in 2022, Japan's largest automaker, Toyota, saw sales decline for the first time in a decade. Mitsubishi revealed their plans in March to electrify their entire lineup by 2035, including four new EVs. Now, whether or not that means re-entry into the Chinese market or what scale, this is really a subject of discussion. In the comment section, let me know what you think happens to Mitsubishi and their electric ambitions. This week's episode is sponsored by Pedego Electric Bikes, America's number one electric bike retailer. Pedego believes in making e-bikes easy to use and incredibly fun to ride. That's why they offer an extensive selection of over 20 e-bike models, each with endless customization options. No matter your style or preference, Pedego has the perfect bike for you. That includes the Avenue, the company's newest model designed with classic European look paired with modern features. It has a 500 watt motor, 48 volt battery, and a range of up to 56 miles on a single charge, making it perfect for commuting or leisurely rides around town. The Avenue comes in both a 28 inch classic step through frame and a 26 inch step through frame, making it accessible for any rider. With over 220 stores across the country, staffed with knowledgeable local experts and dedicated service technicians, Pedego ensures that you receive personalized attention and support every step of the way. Pedego also offers a five-year warranty on all e-bikes, 
which is among the longest on the market right now. In July, Pedigo is running an exclusive promotion for Electrek listeners. You can save up to $500 on their bikes, including the newest bike, the Avenue. You can visit pedigo.com slash electrek to get access or hit the link in the show notes. Thanks again to Pedigo for sponsoring. Warning of tough times ahead, CEO of Volkswagen Passenger Cars, Thomas Schaefer, addressed top Volkswagen employees this week, telling them, quote, this is the final wake-up call. Schaefer is calling for a short-term spending freeze to get costs under control. He said, quote, we are letting the costs run too high in many years. Now, Volkswagen's leader proclaimed this, and the final wake-up call comes as the automaker's dominance over the Chinese auto market is slipping. Volkswagen Group generates around 40% of their revenue in China, yet EV sales are down 1.5% from the first half of the year. The company will focus on higher volume models to streamline production while reducing the number of variants to further optimize efficiency. Volkswagen gave an example of its new ID7 having 99% fewer configurations compared to a Golf 7 model. Now, part of the plan includes doubling Volkswagen passenger cars' profit margins from around 3% currently to 6.5%. Looking ahead, Volkswagen will likely look to introduce cheaper, more basic models with smaller batteries, such as the ID2 All Concept. Volkswagen commercial vehicles and its rideshare arm called Moya has begun transporting passengers in their autonomous vehicles. Volkswagen states that the initial autonomous driving test remains focused on EV operations in urban centers. The test will enable the ID Buzz vans to navigate on level 4 autonomy by SAE standards for operation in rideshare and transport services. Volkswagen will continue autonomous rides in Munich over the next few weeks as operations simultaneously expand in the USA. Amid the growing competitive market in China's EV market, General Motors looks to introduce a new Cadillac that's expected to be cheaper than the Lyric. Now, according to the Chinese government documents, the name of the Cadillac will be the Optique, or Optic, either way, spelled with a Q at the end. Now, the Cadillac will be smaller than the Lyric and will come in two single motor versions with either 150 or 180 kilowatt max power. Now, in addition, the electric SUV's battery pack will be from a joint venture between China's CATL and China's SAIC, with whom General Motors already has a joint venture in the region. The vehicle will undoubtedly be cheap, as GM announced that they were slashing prices on the Lyric already. Thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.